Thank you for the introduction. Um, so I'm presenting our paper towards the distraction-free ways. Uh, this is a work out of uh, CMU that I've done with Christoph Mertz, uh, Babu from Intel Labs, uh, Professor Marcel Albert of the Robotics Institute, and of course, Professor Satya. Um, so most of you, probably all of you are familiar with Waze. It's the crowdsourcing application of choice for most people. Um, it's a way to crowdsource um, high, highly detailed uh, maps. Um, it, so it's got over 100 million active monthly users. And in 2013, Google purchased Waze for $1.15 billion, uh, which show, goes to show you its perceived uh, value to the public. Unfortunately, um, Waze comes at the cost of user distraction, as most of these people using this app are single drivers, and it's incurring, di it's incurring distraction uh, whenever they're using this app. Um, just on my trip here uh, from SJC, here's my, a picture of my Uber driver actually using Waze um, just yesterday, so on Highway 17, which is one of the most dangerous uh, roads in the Bay Area. Um, so it is a big deal, um, and so we pose the question, can we have the benefits of Waze without this user distraction? Um, so we propose uh, a system to do this, to automate uh, this process. So the high-level overview is that we want to essentially be able to detect hazards and then uh, distribute it to other vehicles so that they can make uh, context-aware decisions on their route planning. Um, we propose a system to do this uh, with three main components, and we prototype it. Um, the first component is the zone cloudlet. Um, it is an edge server, uh, which basically acts as a message broker uh, between vehicles. It receives hazard updates from vehicles. It distributes, uh, it caches it in its database, and it also distributes it to other vehicles in the area. Um, we have the uh, vehicle cloudlets, which are the workhorses. They run the um, deep neural networks to basically detect these hazards, um, and then. Uh, send it up, um, send it to the zone cloudlet for distribution. Um, these vehicle cloudlets have in-vehicle cameras and in-vehicle uh, compute required to do this. And all our communication is done um, currently using is existing 4G LTE networks. Uh, so a quick look under the hood uh, for implementation details. We have um, on the right, the vehicle cloud that all the internode communication inside there. So we have the GPS information and the raw camera feed coming in. Um, all this information is transported uh, between nodes via ROS, the robot operating system. Uh, we then run our computer vision algorithm on it, send it to the data handler, and the data handler um, uses the MQTT protocol to transmit uh, to the zone cloudlet, which then receives these detections um, updates its database and then notifies uh, vehicles of this hazard. And we use PostgreSQL as the database. I apologize, the looks like the formatting got cut off on my conversion to PowerPoint last minute. Um, and then, of course, the PostgreSQL conveniently sends a notification to the web server um, where a web client can connect and view these hazards uh, real time. Um, so we need to enforce some um, send policies that arise from kind of the nature of detecting things with video feeds. So most um, live video feeds will uh, occur at 30 frames per second. And so you can as imagine there's a lot of redundant frames. Um, if you're detecting a hazard and you're also stopped at a light, you're going to be continuously sending the same information over and over again. And to prevent this, uh, we've uh, implemented a, a GPS filtering uh, method. So basically, if you a uh, vehicle cloud it, cloudlet will query its database, and if it's detected something of a similar class um, that it just detected, it will not send it. And um, we explore different radii of, of this kind of filtering. And the, the problem that this creates now is that if you've uh, detected something and you know a hazard exists, how will you get rid of the current hazards existing on the road? You're, um, in theory, if you filtered out perfectly, you would never hear about the same hazard that you just detected. and so get around this, uh, we incorporate a uh, zone cloudlet polling scheme where the zone cloudlet uh, no, uh, notices that, say, some hazard is, is still on the map. Um, I haven't heard about it since. Uh, is it still out there? And it basically sends a poll to a, a vehicle that's passed by the area. Um, and the vehicle will send a yes, no response at the vehicle uh, if it saw it or not. And so one can imagine that 
Um, there's uh, benefits to uh, how much compute is inside the vehicle. Um, so we consider two different uh, types of vehicle cloudlets. The first is a uh, is like a ruggedized server. Uh, we call it the big or beefy uh, vehicle cloudlet. Uh, it has uh, two Intel Xeon CPUs, two Intel uh, or two Nvidia Tesla V100 GPUs, and it has a significant um, uh, amount of memory. So it can afford to run these very computationally and memory intensive object detection neural networks. Um, and it, what it sends um, is a bounding box around the hazard, and it sends it to the zone cloudlet. We also consider a small vehicle cloudlet, which is just a mobile phone, and it's limited in its compute and memory, so it can o we can only uh, classify scenes as interesting versus not interesting, and then we send this image to the zone cloudlet, and then the zone cloudlet uh, will is forced to run the object detection uh, to compensate for the lack of compute. Uh, so we test our system detecting potholes. Uh, we wanted something that we could test out in the wild, and uh, Pittsburgh, which uh, where we collected our data and annotated, has a ton of potholes uh, through through several of the months. And it's I know it's not as big of a deal on the West Coast, but on the East Coast, it, uh, there's some massive potholes that will do uh, very big damage to your car. Um, so we uh, collected the data, so about 3,000 images, and basically benchmarked our system on it. Um, so we, um, here's a, I'm gonna be presenting a demo. Hopefully it works uh, after this conversion, um, detecting potholes. On this top left, you're gonna be seeing uh, the raw video feed. This is what the vehicle cloud will be seeing. On the bottom left, you'll be seeing what it actually sends uh, to the zone cloudlet, and on the right, you'll be seeing the web-based application where you can, uh, where any kind of web client can go in and, and look at these hazards. Uh, so I might have to click to start it. So as it's, as it's driving around, you'll see the detections in the uh, by the red bounding box. It does pretty well on, uh, detecting these potholes, but as you can see, it, it also has some false positives as well, which is um, which is gonna obviously be present in these kinds of systems, but this is reduced the more data you collect and the more annotated data you have, these detectors perform much, much better. And so with, with more anno annotated images, there's no doubt that this could uh, be further improved. skip ahead. Um, so we also look at the system latency. Um, the big vehicle cloud lid again has way, way, way more compute and even with a bigger network it can still run it. Um, the detection if on the on the left you can see it runs it at th about 39 milliseconds per frame. Um, real time is about 33 milliseconds but we have two GPUs so we can alternate frames and achieve real time detection performance. Uh, whereas the small mobile phone can only uh, uh, run it at about 2.8 frames per second. Uh, th obviously, th the transmission time is about the same. So the end-end latency boost by using more compute um, is about threefold. In terms of the detection results, again, the big vehicle cloud lid is at 30 frames per second, and the small vehicle cloud lid is at 2.8. We also get a, a big boost um, in event recall. Um, there's an 8% gain uh, while we also reduce by half the amount of bandwidth consumed. So what we see is the small vehicle cloudlet is um, less stringent on what it kind of reports uh, because it does run, run at uh, 10 times less the frequency, but it still sends twice the amount of data. And we also did an exploration of the, um, the GPS filtering radius. Uh, we varied this and did a case study on to see um, how our performance on our test sequences does. And what we found is kind of what we, um, we just kind of confirmed what we expected where uh, past a certain threshold, um, basically it's, it was within the radius of the, uh, our GPS module accuracy. Uh, beyond this point, we begin to lose um, event recall. And, um, but we also obviously send less data because we, we do miss things. Um, and the small vehicle cloudlet is a somewhat nice trade-off. Again, it's, it's twice the amount of uh, average bandwidth consumed. Um, and this does, uh, one thing I do want to point out is um, this also 
demonstrates the importance of hazard prioritization. So in this kind of a system, it doesn't necessarily make sense because you're still consuming a, a pretty big, lar a pretty large amount of bandwidth just by detecting potholes. So you definitely want to do some sort of prioritization scheme where when your car is garaged, you would then offload these kind of uh, lower ranked hazards and, and prioritize uh, consuming LTE bandwidth with uh, car accidents and, and road closures and such. Um, I'm going to be, uh, so this was a demo at the uh, Open Edge Computing uh, Consortium. Um, so a couple of things, uh, we, a lot of people ask, uh, have you tried detecting other um, instances? And we've also detected uh, traffic cones. And so we kind of extended this demo to be um, a little more exciting. We turn off the GPS filtering and add trace markers of our vehicle. And on the left, you're going to be seeing um, this modified system. And on the right, you're going to be seeing a real time. Uh, this is a, a live video feed from uh, via Skype call uh, for a live a live demo, and hopefully. Unfortunately, I, it looks like I can't skip ahead. Um, so I might have to forgo that. Sorry about that. Um, so in conclusion, uh, we basically, we have prototyped an automated detection system uh, where the vehicle cloudlets go out and detect the hazards and then report these to the zone cloudlet. Um, we've compared two different um, types of vehicle cloudlets and uh, there's some advantages from the using a, a more compute uh, present in the vehicle such as better hazard detection and lower detection latency. Um, the small vehicle cloudlet, uh, as an alternative, though, pr uh, provides lower cost hazard detection, and we do prove, um, we successfully prove a proof of concept using a, a smaller mobile phone. Um, in terms of future work, uh, we want to implement the uh, sending only critical info over 4G LTE now that we have some multi uh, class, uh, we have multiple classes. Um, and we also, obviously, privacy is a concern, so we want to denature images before sending them to the zone cloudlet. Um, and then lastly, um, a better way to detect whether, um, a tr uh, whether a scene has changed is by performing uh, change detection um, using deep uh, convolutional neural nets. Uh, any questions?